All right, so we're now ready to take one of the developmental course preps. Remember that the VPT prep course consists of three separate courses for the three developmental math courses. Uh, we talked before about you may need all three or you may need just one or two of those and how you can ask one of your advisors or use the document here to determine which one you need. I'll be going through this demonstration with the Math 1 course, but the process will be the same for the other two courses. So once you decided where you need to go, go ahead and get into the course by opening it up, clicking on the arrow to expand that folder, and you'll see that within each one there is a diagnostic pretest, a series of about a dozen course objectives, which themselves are subfolders and can be expanded and contracted in the same way by clicking on the arrow, and within those are the individual unit level objectives which are the learning modules themselves. And each one of those is an assignment. Now there's a lot of assignments but you may not need all those. In fact you probably won't need all those and the diagnostic test will be used to determine which ones you need to focus and study on. Before we get to that, I mentioned that at the end there is a diagnostic post-test which will determine how well you've understood and improved and let you know whether you're ready to go on and take the VPT. After I've completed this for Math 1, if I still need Math 95 or T6 or 9, I would complete the same process for those two courses. Now let's take a closer look at this process. The process all begins by taking the diagnostic pretest. In some ways, this is meant to simulate one third of the VPT, as there are three diagnostic pretests for the three courses. So, before you take this, you need to simulate the VPT as much as possible. You need to get yourself a computer with a reliable internet connection. You're going to need to have some time to focus and be free of distractions. And you're going to want to take this in one sitting all at once. You're not going to have access to any resources, so don't access other websites. Don't ask other people questions. Don't look things up in books. Don't look things up on your phone. You will be given a built-in four-function calculator for most of the questions on the test, but there are some questions you won't be given one, and those would be questions that show up in this Math 1 diagnostic pretest. So feel free to use a four-button calculator for the pretests in Math 95 and MT 6 through 9, but when taking the Math 1 diagnostic test, pay attention for some questions will say not to use a calculator. Make sure you don't use a calculator at all on those. Once you're ready to start this test, and you know you have about an hour time to do it, go ahead and click on Math 1 Diagnostic Test, or whichever diagnostic test you're taking. The questions will be presented differently from the entering answers or learning modules. You'll be forced to take the questions in the order they are given. You'll have one attempt on each question. There will be about 60 questions, so again, this may take about an hour to do. If you don't know the answer to a question, simply hit next or continue to skip past it. It will ask you if you're ready or you really want to submit a question that hasn't been answered. If you really don't know the answer, go ahead and hit OK or make an educated guess. As with the entering answers, you do have access to the special menu buttons if they're needed. and partial credit is given for problems with multiple answer blocks. Okay, well, I'm going to simulate taking this diagnostic pretest for you, and I don't want you to have to sit through all that, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, and uh, you'll join me back when I'm about to finish. So I'll see you in a few seconds for you, and quite a while for me. All right, I'm just finishing up my diagnostic pretest here. My last problem. And hitting continue on the last problem, we'll finish the test. And we will get a categorized score breakdown. So this is really important, and we've got a couple of options here. Uh, one is to make a printed version of this, 
and you can do a printed version by just right clicking, selecting print. Uh, you can save it as a PDF, so you get an electronic version on your computer, or just print it from a printer. And uh, you really just need the beginning part, um, so you can stop when it starts showing all the answers to the questions. So we just need this table here at the beginning. And what it does is it shows you how well you've done on each of the objectives in the Math 1 course, or whichever course you're working on. Uh, so each one of those questions in that diagnostic test were tied into an objective, and all learning objectives were covered. So if you're ready to um, place out of this Math 1 course, for instance, on the VPT test, you would have a good grade for all the objectives. Uh, scanning through, I want to look for any objectives that I did not score 70% or better. Um, so you want to see the good grades will be ones you don't have to worry about studying, and then the bad grades are the ones you want to go back and study on. And you do want to attack these in order. So uh, I've gotten a, quite a few wrong here on purpose. I don't want you to think that I don't know this material myself. Um, some of them I skipped and some of them I, I got wrong just to show you how this would look for a typical student. And uh, we're now ready to go ahead and attack the problems or objectives that we did not successfully complete. So uh, we're going to want to do these in order. So start at the top and move down. And if you're doing this on paper, you're just crossing off the ones that you have a good grade for. And then as you complete the learning objectives for the other ones, you can cross those off as well. Uh, if you're just using the website, these are active links and it will take you directly to the assignment to teach you that objective. So uh, my first two, I have 1.1, um, I got a zero, so I'm going to want to work on that. And then 1.4, I got a 60%. And that's, uh, that's better than a zero, but I'd still say that I need to study that one a little. Uh, whereas if I get something like a 70, or an 80, then I feel more confident in not having to worry about that. Because uh, when you take the tests, uh, sorry, when you take these developmental courses, then typically getting a 75 or better is passing grade. Okay, so you can click on these links. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this one to go to the first assignment. It should take me right there. And we're gonna look at the basic idea of the learning module because all the learning, mo learning modules are pretty much the same layout. The first question will have a video lecture and then there'll be a textbook reading. You can just click on the middle and it'll start playing the video lecture. It should have audio and subtitles if you want. You can turn those closed captionings on and off and you can adjust the settings for the speed and the quality of video from the little gearbox menu. You can watch it in full screen and adjust the volume and pause and move the video around in the normal way you'd watch a YouTube video. You can also click on the YouTube logo to open this up in another window where you can watch it in YouTube and you can bookmark it or uh, you can uh, subscribe to the author of the video. So. There's the video for learning, one way, um, and then we also have the textbook reading, which should open up a PDF. You can save this PDF, you can print it off, you can do whatever you want with it. It is an open educational resource as well, so if you're better uh, read by visually looking at, at examples from a book, then this is a great way to do it. We recommend using both the book and the video and taking notes while you're doing it. Once you have done this, go ahead and click the box at the bottom that says you have reviewed those resources, and then hit Submit. The green check mark lets you know that you have completed viewing the resources, but you can always come back to them again. Then questions two and those that follow should test the concepts for this objective. These problems should have the settings of three attempts. So. Go ahead and try to answer the question. Hit submit. And if you did not get it completely correct, there is a video lecture here that should open up and have you an, another example very similar to what you've done. So it should be a little smaller in size than the lecture video we saw in question one 
and more specifically focus to the problem you were doing. Uh, you can also go back to question one and refer to those resources. Then you can reattempt the problem until you get it correct. Now, if you get it correct incorrect three times, it will be sort of temporarily assigned a grade based on what you have right. I have half of this right, so I got 0.5 out of 1. And I am given the answers to the problem. So I can look and see what I did wrong. But this is not where the learning ends. You're now ready to try another similar question now that you understand what's going on. So say I go through this again. And I made another mistake and got it wrong again. But I finally see what's going on. Maybe I watch the video again. I look at some of the notes I made. And I get it right. Ultimately, you do want to get full credit on every problem in the learning modules that you had trouble with on the diagnostic test. So you're now ready to go on to question three and do the same thing for question three. However, notice that I did not get this question right on my first attempt. So both myself and the other course designer think that for, to really understand what's going on here, you need to be able to get these questions right on your first attempt without looking at any resources. So even if you get it right this way, I challenge all of you for any of these problems to hit try another similar question and get it right on the first attempt without watching a video or looking at notes, or doing anything. Of course, you can do some written work on paper. But what we want to do here is simulate the VPT. On the VPT, you get one attempt and you don't have access to any resources. So make sure that you can do the problem under those circumstances before moving on. Once you have a satisfactory grade on the assignment, so here I just have two thirds, so I need to get this one right as well. Now I have a grade of three out of three, I'm ready to go on. Now, if I have a printed off version or I remember the next objective that I needed to work on, then I can go directly there by going to VPT prep course, and I'm working in the math one, but go to the course you're working in, and then the numbering here allows you to know which course level objective you're in. I'm looking for objective 1-3, so I know that's in objective 1. All right, so in objective 1, then we have unit level objective 1-3, this learning module, and I can go ahead and start that one and go through the same process. Doing this, you want to go through and slowly mark off every learning objective that you had trouble with when you got the results of your diagnostic pretest. Now, supposing you didn't print this off and you do want to just keep a digital version of it, it is stored in the Ohm site. To access that table again, go to your gradebook and go to the results of the diagnostic test. In this case, I took the Math 1 diagnostic pretest. So I'm going to go there and I'm going to click on the grade. And I scroll to the bottom. So when I first click on it, I see the results of the actual test I took and it shows every question and the answers. But if I scroll all the way to the bottom, I can get to that, cate that categorized score breakdown that I talked about earlier. Now, this score breakdown won't update based on that. So I know I just completed 1.1. It's still going to say a 0% here. So you do need to balance this with the gradebook. Um, but I can go back and I can say, oh, it was actually 1.4 that I had trouble with, not 1.3. And I can use this to go to the 1.4 assignment by clicking on that. So you can always go back to the gradebook and go to this categorized score breakdown and go through these in order, the ones that you don't have a 75% or better on. If you need to at any time see which ones you have done, you can always just go to your gradebook and look, and you can compare the two things. So 
I knew I needed certain objectives and 1.1 was listed, but here uh, 1.1 is shown that I have credit for that one. So doing this, we can actually go through and complete all the objectives that we had a score of below 70% on in the diagnostic test. Once that's done, we are ready to take the diagnostic post-test. The diagnostic post-test will seem very similar to the pre-test. In fact, it is from the same set of questions because it's the same objectives we're testing. Uh, so give yourself about that same amount of time and again, use the same testing procedures where you are pretending this is the BPT, not using any resources, doing this all in one setting, um, and uh, using the time that's given. And if a question says no calculator, then use no calculator. After I finish this, I will get another categorized score breakdown just like I did before, and hopefully that time you're going to get 75 or 70 percent or better on every objective. That lets you know you're ready to go on to the next course. So if I finish Math 1, I'm ready to go on and start Math 95. And if I finish Math 95, I'm ready to go on and take MT 6 through 9. Again, you may not need Math 95 or 6 through 9, so in that case that wouldn't apply to you. And once you've done all the courses that you need, then you're ready to take the VPT. So that's the basic idea of how this course works. If you still have questions on this, uh, go ahead and refer to any documentation that's provided in the course, um, or send a question to your CMBE rep or one of the designers of the course, myself or Professor Gill. Hopefully this helps you out and prepares you for the VPT and saves you some time in taking developmental courses. And uh, thank you for watching the video.